Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of NCW, also known as New Comic Wednesday. If you haven't been with us before, we chat for a few minutes every Wednesday about Cinescope's newest releases. If you don't know who I am, I am your NCW host. Oh, I forgot about that. Casey, did you? I didn't see last week's NCW. Did you make one for you? I Oh, you did. You did. Adorable. I love that. Well, it is NCW with Amber this week. Um, but so thank you so much for joining me at 3 p.m. It has been a little bit of time since I've seen everybody, uh, but I'm excited today to talk about Zenoscope's newest releases. But speaking of their newest releases, where do you find Zenoscope's newest releases? You would head to Zenoscope.com, press new releases, and it will show you everything that we have, as well as hopping on to Comixology if you're on the go. Or if you feel like taking a little trip, you can head to your local comic shop and buy Zenoscope's latest releases there. Make sure that if they don't carry Zenoscope, you ask them to carry Zenoscope and uh, maybe you get a subscription of some of our most popular characters. In the corner, you can see Robin Hood right here, but we also have Belle, Van Helsing, et cetera. So yeah, to make sure that you never miss any of our streams at any point, especially NCW at 3 p.m., make sure that you like, you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you react so other people can find these videos as well. And then you can go back and you can watch them whenever you feel like it. Let's say that maybe you're trying to figure out what happened in the latest Robin Hood issue. You can go back. If you already subscribed or if you reacted or liked it, you can find that in your feed. So Again, today we're on NCW. We have two wonderful guests and we technically have two releases. We really have one release and then a series of releases. But um, our first release today that we'll talk about is Grim Fairy Tales number 71. Ah, so many Grim Fairy Tales. I feel like we've got to be somewhat approaching volume three eventually, which we'll talk to Dave and David about in just a moment. But it's $3.99 in our web store. As always, Grim Fairy Tales comes out very often. So it's always $3.99. You have four incredible covers to pick from. Those are your four covers right there, A, B, C, and D. And those are the lovely artists that design those covers. So in the comments, make sure you put what your favorite cover is, what you really liked about the cover, um, anything like that. But yep, Grim Fairy Tales, volume two, number 71 the dark one. Ooh, spooky, scary. And while you put your favorite comic cover, I will read the synopsis. As the fallout of the dark one's return settles upon the grim universe, the released chaos has begun to crumble. What little stability our heroes have been hanging on to. Now Sky and her team an arcane acre must scramble to protect humanity from his wrath as he aims to complete his, I hate this word, Malvin, I can never say it. And I'm sure that you're both laughing at me in the background. Uh, the scheme, but is it too late? 40 pages. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to bring on our two lovely dynamic duo publishing team. I feel like maybe I could have publishing people, publishing party people, publishing peeps i don't know i'm sure they'll both help me with uh the names that we've come up with now malevolent publishing people malevolent <laughs> how do you say that word malevolent 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 dave why do you put this in the synopsis if you know i can't read it why does Joe put this in the synopsis if he knows I can't read it? No, nah, I don't know. What other words can't you say? Um, you say Worcestershire? Worcestershire? <laughs> Worcestershire? We should just uh, go on a... I was about to say another word that was said the wrong way, so I'm just going to stop talking and talk to the two people that make this storyline happen, and I will go to Dave first. When do we start Volume 3? Never. Oh, okay. um, now, yes, I, I, I mean, volume one kind of ended with Grim Fairy Tales 125. But that was more just kind of so we can kind of reestablish the, 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 like the, the story going forward. We don't have a plan to turn this into volume three anytime soon. It's going to keep going with this volume two, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Unless like somebody surprises me. But I think we're, yeah, we're going to keep going with uh, volume two. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think it's cool to have the numbers get higher, right? It, uh, well, like technically, technically, Grim seventy five will be legacy number two hundred. Let's be let's be wild. Actually, 
we're gonna go straight to ten. Yes. Um, I don't. We've never talked about this before, but have you guys ever watched Thanks Killing? No. no. The turkey murder movie. He's like gobble gobble, mother. And I'm not gonna finish that anyway. In they go from Thanks Killing one to Thanks Killing three. They just skipped two, and the whole concept of the third movie is that they're trying to find the lost footage of the second movie, and we could do that. As Steven just pointed out, and that would be wild. Or, That's not a bad idea. Where we just we do go to volume, we go to volume three, or we go to volume four, and we just reference all the things in volume three that never happened. <gasps> Whatever yes. the issue is just like C it volume three issue, issue for whatever. Too. Yeah, C volume three issue twenty eight for yeah. what we'll happens. Send them on this like endless treasure hunt down a rabbit hole to find nothing. And maybe okay. in the actual book, they'll be reading volume three. Or or we put out the most limit. There's like one copy in the world of volume three that only we have access to. And that some like a bad idea comes Super uh, cost effective. <laughs> we make one. Everybody starts reading volume four, but they can only get this access to volume three by some way that I haven't come up with for us yet. But, I, heard, uh, I heard Joe Tyler wasn't available. To write? Wow. This is just depressing. <laughs> um, anyway, back on the topic of our actual story. So Grim Fairy Tales, number 71, volume two, never to become volume three at this moment, in case anybody was wondering. Where are we at in this story? What's going on? And who are the dark ones? I don't know. I just don't one know. dark one. Just who is the dark one? No, it's the dark. Oh, yeah, it is just one. It's a dark one, but then there's like deep ones, and then there's yeah. little gods. There's a lot. There's a lot of ones and things and gods. Um, no, I mean, so this is pretty much building on to this Cthulhu arc, Lovecraft arc that we've been we've been working on, um, and it's been going throughout the entire Grim universe. So what is it? The the dark one came back at the end of issue sixty eight. And then 68, 69, I don't remember. They're all, uh, he came back recently. And now it's kind of showing you, like, we haven't seen him since he's come back. And now we're getting his part of the story of where, what, why he's back, what's going on, what he, what he means to the, the bigger story coming up. And, and it's the first time we've seen him in, I mean, like the, these last three issues, this is the first time we've seen him in, I don't know, what's that, 70, 70 something issues so it's been a while so now we got to re we want to recatch up everybody on who the dark one was what you thought he was and what he actually is and that's what you get in group 71 you get a little you get a little bit more about who he was and what his past was and now where he's going and that's what this story is plus there's a lot of other stuff that goes on it there's a lot of information in this issue like is it it's common is it hard to constantly write cliffhangers in these stories. No, you just run out of room. You just, <laughs> you just, no. you just like, you're just like writing like, oh crap, that's page 23. I guess that's, issue, that's page one of the next one. No, I mean, like, I, I think I was telling David that like last night or this morning, I guess, at whatever, one in the morning, my time, eight, nine, ten o'clock his time. But I was like, I love, that's like some of my favorite part is like the, like the cliffhanger, the reveals, the like the end's always my favorite. Like when you when you kind of give that like, oh you know, yeah, like, we we're talking about uh, like Cinderella, Cinderella versus the Queen of Hearts number two. Yeah, so like I, I love that. Like, those are like my favorite parts to write. Is like, oh my god, what's coming? Like, and not to the point where it's like annoying. Like, I hope we're not annoying. Where you're just like, this is stupid. Like, I get it. You're like, but it's more just kind of like, you you want them to, you want them to get enough story and then be like, I need to know more. And, and I guess it's really exactly what a cliffhanger is. But then there's sometimes where they're just annoying, where you're just like, come on, dude, I just want like two more minutes. Just give me one more page or something like that. But so take me through this process, both of you. You have the stories fleshed out, right? You have the stories full fleshed out. And then you're like, okay, this is what's going to go in each issue. And you just cut it in like, is it like cutting up like a piece of candy or something? We're like, ah, we can cut it right here. And this could be the cliffhanger for then this next part. I got to say, usually probably 
um, if you're like, say you're creating like a, a whole new story idea, right? You probably have a really good idea of the beginning of it. And maybe like, say it was like eight issues, probably like the when you're cutting from the first to the second, you have a really strong idea of where it's going. But as time goes on, it's like, to me, it's like there's a more general idea and a less specific idea. So I know for me personally, when I get to the ending, um, like when I was working on Oz, like we had a general idea for where it was going to end. But by the time I was actually figuring out like the end of two and the beginning of three, um, then I kind of I'm kind of uh, it's almost a game, you know, to try to, you know, figure out something to make the ending cool and then also figure out how to turn that into the next, you know, how to solve it. Um, so sometimes I, I know for me personally, there's like a matter of that. Like, I, I really don't know, like, you know, oh, interesting. I know generally where it's going to go, but I may not know in the in the short term how to connect. Yeah, like, like I'm like, oh, it'll be cool if we, you know, kill Thorn at the end of issue two. I haven't maybe not necessarily thought about how we're going to bring him back yet. Uh, just knowing that we probably should. Um, <laughs> and then you get the end of issue three, you're like, oh, shit, we forgot. I forgot about that. So, <laughs> a spoiler alert, by the way, uh, for those of you who haven't read uh, <laughs> Oz Return of the Wicked Witch. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so... It sounds like David plays it fast and loose with his endings to next beginnings. I feel like Dave's got to play it the same way, right? Depends. I mean, some of the stuff like Grim, for for the Grim stuff where it's like tied into a, a bigger arc, and we kind of and we have to tie all these different stories together. You can't really be too loose with it, only because like there's just too many pieces. Like we have so many different stories that have to wrap up. So like I mapped out page by page, like the next four issues. So like they're like, they're all mapped out exactly where we can kind of go in and change out and stuff like that. But also too, when you map them out that way, like even like this, like, so like, like here's how some of them are done, but it's like, um, like when you're writing it, when you're turning into the panels and you're turning it in the story, you're like, ah, oh, crap, I didn't give myself enough room to write this. Or like, Oh, I didn't, you know what? while you're writing it, it kind of evolves into something else. It's like, oh, I thought this was going to happen, but like, it'd be probably better this way. Does it still work with everything? But it's the same thing. Like, I, I, like writing, like, uh, like I think it's more for me, like where they, they were saying it for more issue two. I do that more issue one, like for the, like the Cindy series is like, I knew where I was going with two and three to a degree. And then, but issue one, it was like, all right, let's, let's put all these place, like let's put all these things in place. And then, and then we'll figure out how to how to make two and three work around where 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 one goes. But like, I, don't know, I mean, that's the fun part of it. The fun part is is literally figuring out the problems you created, and then making them work, and then hoping that people enjoy it. Have you ever, and this may just not happen, but have you ever written something and created panels for it, and then be like, "Wow, this is way too long. Let's chop this up," and then make it into another another story from there after it's already been made, or it's like, "No, you got to find a way to make it work." Ah, uh, I mean, like when the stuff's already drawn. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, like that one. It's like at that point, that's just that's just bad. Yeah, probably um, not that far, but because by then you're knowing that whether the story is working the way you're intending it or not. Um, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, you should be probably figuring that out when you do like your 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 page breakdowns and layouts and by your panels. Like, but yeah, if you're if you're getting stuff figured through. out how to make it work in that story, um, like being like, oh my god, we've taken this much space and we need to finish the story in eight pages. Definitely have done that sort of thing. Um, but it's but never uh, have yeah been able to just like throw something into something else like once it was done. Not yet. There's always a chance. I hope if, not. Let's let's plan around what that. <laughs> if you've ever written a story that um, have you ever written a story that didn't fill out everything that you thought it would, and and is there a trick around making it like go longer than you like Flight laffy scenes. taffy? <laughs> Yeah, Fight I mean, oh, noted. I mean, it really depends, you know. I mean, if it's if it's like really too short, then um, then it's a matter of like you know building the story more because like part of it is like a little cosmetic, right? Like if a if a, if I thought a scene was going to be eight pages, but it was really seven, you know, that's like that not that big of a deal. But if a scene you think is if you think a whole book is like twenty two pages, but you really only have ten pages of story. That's more like a big problem, you know? That's more like, you know, I wouldn't want to expect, 
like I want to I don't want to just do it to get it done, you know, because I want people to like it and, and people are going to smell like, oh, this is not much story. You ever see like a movie like that, right? Where you wow, this this movie could have been like 20 minutes, but it's like three hours. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you don't want that. Um, so so then it's a matter of actually building a better story, you know, on the fly, <laughs> like creating better subplots and, you know, like making making it more resonant, you know like making it work it's hard but but uh but that's what you have to do yeah i mean like, yeah yeah exactly if it's 22 pages and all of a sudden it's 10 it's like maybe this isn't like a full story maybe there's stuff missing yeah usually my problem is the other way like yeah, too, yeah. kind of stuff too much in there yeah it's like it's somehow putting 30 pages worth of stuff in 22 pages and you're like all right like what can you cut and then that's where you get to like, okay, what can I put in the next issue? What can I put in another issue? What, what, what do I, what, what do I want in this issue be, compared to what this issue needs, like for the story? Where it's like, I really like this cool scene, and it's like, all right, well, you can do that sometime. You can find out where that fits somewhere else. If it doesn't, if it's not making making a break in the story, then it's just you got to cut that stuff. That's the same thing. Like I, I, I sometimes write too much. And then it's just like you're, you're you're pulling back, and then you're just like cutting out all the things, or or finding ways to, like instead of being three pages, it could be one page because you didn't need all this extra stuff in there. Um, or there's times where you're just like, all right, I'm, yeah, I'm short a page, or I'm short two pages, and you're like, you know what? We haven't seen a giant. Let's go. With, let's let the artist have something really cool and do like a double page splash. Like instead of having this fight scene happen over like five panels on page one on one page. Let's do it as like three giant panels on on two pages to kind of let like let the let the fans in something really cool. It's like your big action movie thing. Like, and it's just and as long as it all makes sense for the story too. Because if you're just throwing things in there that aren't helping the story or making like making the story better, then it's just then they're just pointless and people are gonna just be like, okay, well then what was that for? Like, <laughs> you show me something, you move on to the next thing. It's like it's like watching a horror movie and they just. All of a sudden, like they're they're in a they're in a building, and then it cuts to another guy killing a guy in a train, and then it cuts back to the building. Like, well, what about the guy in the train? Like, what was that about? Like, I just want to show you that. <laughs> It'll come back later on. Um, <laughs> without giving away too much of the story, and we've talked about this on other NCWs, but I wanted to share my screen so we can kind of talk through the general concept of how of how you develop these stories because fans seem to be pretty interested by that. So for Something we do a lot at Xenoscope, and I'm sure a lot of other publishers do, is that we usually have some sort of like quick intro story or quick thing that happens. How long do you want that? How long is that typically at a story? And what part of the story does that develop? So like, for example, if you were to have just some random guy killed right from the beginning, this kind of dives into it, but I guess let's give it for this guy's storyline dies right in the beginning. Do you come up with that part of the story at the end? Because you're like, oh, we just need some sort of intro. Or is that something you come at in the beginning of the story of like, this is how we're going to kick off the story to get to our point? Um, oh, I mean, it, it's, it, 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 there's no definite answer. Like some issues you just write, like some issues you kind of know where it's going to start. Because like, I don't know, for this one, I, it was more like, I wrote a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a rough paragraph of like, what needs to happen in the story? Like the dark one's gonna do this, and then he's gonna like this is gonna happen to them, and then we're gonna cut to Sky and them, and we're gonna do this. And it was so like you normally kind of start out with like, all right, we need a dark one, we need to establish a dark one here, remind the readers who he is, like show him where he's at and then where he's going and start his thread of the story. And so some of it it might not be right away, like, oh, he's on a boat murdering a guy. It's starting out like we gotta show the dark one, we gotta show what he's doing, and then it evolves from there. It's like, okay, well, let's remind them that he is cold hearted and he's a murderer and he's a villain. So what can we have? And then you go from there and it's like, well, there's something that's going on with like the ocean. There's a, there's a character and things with that in the ocean in the story. So let, let's already establish him in a setting that's going to make it easier or, or where we're going in that story. Like, is he already on the way to where he's going to be at the end of the story? Is he on the way? Like, wh like hey. where's he starting? Where's he going? And then Ivan it's like, I was in the room. Oh, he is. Hi, Ivan. <laughs> Thank you for the awesome cover today, Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I think I think Dave, um, with this particular one, I think the additional benefit is you get to have some humor 
and you get to like see a little more about his character, you know, besides like telling us where he came from and, and you know, who he is and kind of setting up the status quo. You also just get to see, you know, a guy who hasn't been around for a while wanting to live life, you know, like it just, yeah, like, just a little more about him because he's on a yacht and because he's like, he's just like in this weird setting, you know, for, for a super villain, you know, he's not sitting and, alone, like telling people this is the bad stuff I'm going to do. He's no, like, and then that's like, it calls back to like when we originally had the dark one, he was almost like a he was like the devil playboy. Like he basically he was more about the the carnal pleasures of life than just like oh, I'm gonna take over the world today. It's like that was his his goal was always to to get gain power, but it was so he can enjoy what he was gaining. And that's like it was a callback to all the things and reestablish his his personality to the readers. It's like, yeah, he's on a yacht, he's taking this dude's yacht. And then he turns back into his human form, and he's like, "It's because I'm gonna, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna come back to this life, and I'm gonna go do something that needs to be done, I'm gonna do it in style and enjoyment." And that's, that's exactly what Dave was just saying. So you get a little bit of his personality, like that. That whole first scene is just literally to establish the the monster side of him and the human side of him, and then go from there. How long is the typical first scene? Uh, anywhere, like I mean, depends on how big the book is. Depends on how much you got to put in the story. I mean, a normal, like for me, I, I try to stick to like three to five pages. Like it's like, it, 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 just so you can get, I mean, some, some page, some books you can do it in one page. You can literally start off on this other complete scene and then it transitions into your, your hero's story or something like that. It, it's, it's funny. It's because like, me and David always talk about supernatural, but if you, I, I watch so many of them and you watch enough of them, they, st it's cool. I like learning from like different like mediums and stuff like that. But you can see some stories they start off with like just the main character starting off. Some story they start off with the main villain starting off. Some stories they start off with something crazy, and it's like getting to play with that and keeping it interesting for yourself. Um, and then, but yeah, it's not. I mean, for me, it's uh, it's normally like three to five pages. Anything after that is probably too much sometimes for. For like you're you're probably putting too much like you're probably putting too much time into that that scene, and you're not going to have enough time for for the rest for of the story. actual story to go in. And I'll stop sharing there, and 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 we'll dive in on a future NCW more of like the whole concept of of how stories come to be. But lesson that everybody learned today is how the intros work, and and how short or long that they should typically be, and and how uh, thank you, Jason. Um, and how things sometimes change. Is there anything we missed about intros that you feel like might be interesting to the readers? Um, no, I think, I mean, to me, like, they're just, they're, they're always a good way to set the tone for the book, you know? Yeah. I guess I always like picture movies in my head, you know, like the beginning of Jurassic Park or the beginning of like classic movies and or classic horror movies and, and what they were able to pull off in the intro. Um, and I know, like guys that we work with, like Pat, you know, does really good intros, and it's uh, it's fun. Like it's just a fun way to 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 think about that, you know. Like you want to grab the reader. If there's someone happens to be in a comic book store looking at books, if people are still doing that, um, like you want to grab them, and um, and I feel like we both adhere to that, you know, uh, as we're thinking of a story. Um, yeah, like you want to be able to flip through and right away be like, I need to read the rest of this, or like. I mean, you'll make the decision pretty quickly. It's like listening to a song and you're hearing it. And I always hate when you try to listen to a song and it just does music for the first like minute. And you're like, just give me the, I want to hear the lyrics. I want to hear this. Like, and then the sample ends. And then before you even get the words and you're like, I, I don't know. It's don't like that. seeing that big Dallas Cowboy star and knowing that this is a football game I want to watch. This is America's team right here. <laughs> um, last question about the intro i know i said last question before but it sounds like the intro usually with this either involves some sort of like funny scene involves a flashback scene that makes sense or involves a murder is there any other intro that we play with typically out of somebody dying there's an important flashback that's critical to the rest of the story or there's some sort of funny dave wrote this intro so it could be funny and witty intro It seems like it really depends on the on the type of book we're doing, I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, because it, it, it depends too. Like, if it's a character we've never seen before, or it's a character you're introducing, or if it's a character that we haven't seen in a while, and you need it. I mean, it is. It's it's setting the tone, but sometimes you can use it for anything. You can use it to re remind the character, remind the readers what this character's powers are, like what this character's story is, why this character does what they do. Like, I'm just thinking of like the there's a. Like, the I'm trying to think. Like, I know for me, it's a lot of setting the stakes. Right. Like if it, like if there's a or even like like what Dave does it, you know, like the, the beginnings, like there's there's people like and there's a like for this for these whole Cthulhu kind of stories. Right. There's like this big cult that we were establishing for a long time. So several of the stories started with like and, he, and Joe's stories with Robin Hood, you know, stories started with the cult, like doing something that was affecting regular people. And um, and we're seeing over the course of the story, like like the world we're noticing that the world is getting affected by this thing. So, and even like a lot of stories that I do, right. It's like, just like random people are getting affected by something that's out there in the world. And that that's how it gets the attention of our heroes who realize that the problem is bigger. So a lot of it to me is setting the stakes. Um, you know, like any, you know, movie like jaws, right. There's a woman skinny dipping and she gets eaten by a shark. And then thus we know that there's a shark problem in uh, Amity Island. So it, it's sort of like that, you know, it's just like, like getting to see the stakes. I like that. Well, again, we'll dive into the rest of how we break down stories. And like I mentioned, hopefully one day we'll have a full breakdown of here is concept cover. I like to call it concept cover. So I'm going to say from here on out. Uh, but we do have one other release today, which is not a new release. It is our horror box set release. It was a Kickstarter for anybody who did kickstart it originally. I assume that those orders went out and shipped. But Casey, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And that yep, she gave me the probably did. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure they're all out. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I'm just reading Noah's comment. Yeah, I'm just reading Noah's comment, too. <laughs> just made me laugh. Um, but let's talk about Kickstarter. So I know that you're not as involved in the Kickstarting process. That's something that really Joe and Jen drive. But um, these box sets, why create box sets? Cool displays. No, I mean, I, it, it really is. It's just... Uh, this one was more creating a really cool display with this this book that we've been it's been in, it was in development for like I don't know three years it's a long time, um, and then I, I just I, I think it was I don't know I, I don't know the, the the process the thought process behind it to, so I don't want to make it up but I mean we did the the Van Helsing box set which collected all of our 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 paperbacks and was able to reprint some of the stuff that we were out of print on so we did that one. And we saw the success in there and it was more just kind of like, you know, what, let's do that with this horror box set. Let's create this brand new book. And then also let's get these two other books that uh, that we, we feel should be in the hands of people that may have like, they've come out like years ago and they might have been like overshadowed or forgotten. It's like, all right, here, let's just reestablish it. These exist. These are out there. And here's a perfect way to display them. Here's a perfect way to read them. I mean, because the box sets are awesome. Like the, yeah, the, that, the box really itself. Special is awesome. projects. Yeah. There is the box set right there, the Kickstarter box set. And so let's talk about the that story awesome. that, that was new to this box set. You said that it was like three years in development. Why did it take three years? Or was it just something that you still had to flesh out that you wanted to go back to? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, it, was, it, was a lot of, it was a lot of things. It was just a lot of behind the scenes things. We had artist switches in the beginning. Um, just wasn't like we had some artists in the beginning that weren't, just wasn't hitting the tone. Um, and it just, it was just took a while, took a while to get it right, took a while to get it perfect or not perfect, but close to perfect to get it out there. And uh, I mean, that's really it. it, it sometimes it, it never got officially on the schedule, right? So it seems like things just kept getting pushed ahead of it um, because like, well, well, we have like a whole, you know, slate planned out and then we're working toward getting that slate done. And then there's just some projects that somehow sit on the sidelines and, and, you know, just kind of get worked on at their own pace and, and they just move along differently. And then they end up not being part of the, of the slate for one reason or another, but we definitely still want people to see them. So these opportunities come along where we could put them out. It's what David is saying that this was planned from the start. 
Well, I mean, the concept was planned from the start. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not necessarily the Kickstarter. <laughs> um, yeah, planned from the start. That's what I'll say. Uh, that we do it this way. But is there, when you do a Kickstarter, and obviously I've been more involved in the Kickstarting process than I have been in the publishing process, but is there anything that you find yourself tweaking in a story that's already been released? Or is it you're like, we're happy with the story, there's nothing we need to change? Or have you ever gone back and changed something in a story? I know that you have for one book, but I don't know if it's a typical thing you do in titles. Well, I don't think for the Kickstarter... I mean, we're still, I mean, it's, we always just want to do the best story. So like maybe, maybe for the Kickstarter only in the sense that it's a different schedule. Um, so if we might have a little bit more time to tweak it the way we really want it to be tweaked, because we know that, you know, Kickstarter is like a special distribution system, you know, and, um, and we, we want to do good stuff for it. And we have the, maybe the luxury to uh to make another change that we might not do otherwise um i know for this book like we we basically added a new story at the end to flesh out the universe of it for wow. uh, for devil's road um so yeah i mean you get more opportunities with doing a kickstarter um but i i think you know from a quality standpoint you know we just want to make sure it's the best that it could be for the re-releases of things that we've kickstarted in the past, like again, obviously we're re-releasing Paradise Court, but it's in this box set, et cetera. And I know we've re-released, right, the Grim Fairy Tales by putting them in the hardcovers. Like, I and guess maybe just, have we ever gone to a story and then that has already been published for years and gone back and been like, hmm, we need to fix this one part before we republish this. Um, I mean, well, when we when we always print like uh, paperbacks or things like that. We'll, we'll actually go in and fix the mistakes that we catch in the printed books, which drives you crazy until you're like, all right, well, you finally fix these. Where, like, uh, like names are misspelled. I think mm -hmm. it was in Return to Wonderland, there was a name misspelled for like two printings or three printings. And then, like, and then it finally got fixed. Um, I mean, mostly for that, it's never really, you know, I, I think we've only done it once where there's been an alter to the actual, like an alter, like an alter or whatever alteration to the actual story. Um, but I mean, we normally don't like, like for these, it's, it, it's kind of like, it's more just like cleanup fixes, um, small tweaks, small edits, but nothing where you're just like, all right, we're going to rewrite this entire page because we didn't like it the first time. It's like, no, nah, like that's, that's what came out. That's what the story is. Um, it could be cool to do like some kind of director's cut though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could be. Uh, but I mean, we we uh, normally we don't. We normally we like whatever we're we're printing. It's it's even with that, like the hell, like the Van Helsing box set. All we really changed was the uh, the title. I think the title of the first one a little bit, and the covers, because the first one we called it Helsing the Darkness and the Light. But then every like subsequent book after that, we called it Van Helsing. So that's yeah, just at that. But that was like that was just so it was like in line with everything else. And then the covers, but we didn't really do anything on the insides of the books besides just clean up any like spelling mistakes and grammar and stuff like that. Um, for this box set, we know it's a horror box set out of the, you know, the titles that are inside it. What types of horror fans would be interested in these reads? Is it more slasher horror fans is it more who like really gory stories is it more who like mysteries is it more who like demonic what are the what is for these horror fans all what horror fans <laughs> should read this i mean because it's the box set it's pretty much all of them i mean you have the demonic stuff you have the mystery in satan's hollow and paradise court there isn't really a mystery in devil's road but that's more your gory thriller uh a little intensity um but yeah i mean you get a little bit of everything like like but yeah, definitely with Saints Hollow, you're getting more of the demonic stuff and the the cult stuff, and but they all pretty much have a level not of like I wouldn't say excessive gore, but they all have a level of murder. <laughs> they have a level they have a level of people like not doing well with their living after dying. No one wants to know if any kids get killed. I don't know. I, I, we should create like some kind of amber system for it. <laughs> I haven't read. Is that where uh, Amber draws the line? 
I don't know, that's no. where she, she wants more. That's where I know that a story is legit. If they kill the kids, then I'm like, the story is committed. They've committed to killing. We had this whole con- conversation about this when I was in the office, like probably like a year ago. <laughs> in, um, Terrifier, in Terrifier, do they kill kids? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They, they they know no bounds. Uh, fun fact, Terrifier 2 is now officially on Amazon Prime, so you go watch it. And you go watch... I don't know how far in you have to watch. I have to go back and watch it. I haven't seen it since it was in theaters. Maybe like 22 minutes, but you'll see me die on screen for like three seconds. Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh, I gotta I'm put the, it on now. The Terrifier 2. It's like, I, it right might now, be in a 20 minutes. minutes in. I don't remember. You'll know that you're almost there because there'll be this clown cafe dream sequence. When you're in the dream sequence, I'm like right at the end of the dream sequence. I missed most of the filming because it was during COVID. So I could only come. I only filmed for literally like an hour. So that's why my scene is very short. She's so maybe at like 21, 33 <laughs> seconds in. <laughs> Might be. I'm not really sure, but it's. You'll see. You'll know that I'll, it'll just be me on screen. My hand gets chopped off. That's when you'll know, like, that was me. But it's like probably like three seconds. It's very. So you'll fast. be back for part three. <laughs> part four. Yeah, right. You'll be back for part four. Uh, part no part three. I love, I love those guys. But yeah, I'm just. Uh, so obviously, there's a lot of hype around Paradise Court. I haven't read that since I first joined Zenoscope. So was that like three years ago now? Um, but are you guys excited about the news that's revolving around Paradise Court? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not filled in on every min, like uh, small detail of it. But yeah, I mean, it's always awesome to see something, especially that you worked on and saw went from nothing to something. Like, hopefully it, it become like something bigger. And it's in good hands with Screen Gems. They've done a lot of cool stuff. That's yeah. awesome. Well, uh, if you guys want the jump and you haven't read Paradise Court yet and you want to find out what this po- this movie will possibly be made about, you know, I hate to say that it'll be made exactly as a book because, like, does that ever happen? Who knows? Uh, but, you know, go buy this box set if you haven't already. And then you get multiple fantastic reads in here. You don't just get one book. You get multiple stories. Um, so go out and buy that box set. That's my yeah, the, the, actually the, the artist who drew Paradise Court. He drew, he's drawing, he's been drawing all the Grim Fairy Tale stuff. All the oh, cool, yeah, Babasu, Babasu Cortis. I probably butchered how you say his name, but that's how I say it. That's I always I wonder it. too, there are some names I get very nervous to say. Yeah, I'm no, like, it's, well, yeah, I, I know Dave Francini, is it Dave? Francini, is it Dave? Yeah, I don't know if it's hard to butcher your name, but it could be. Could be. People is, do it all the time. Is it David Wall? Is it David Woe? Who knows? Who knows? I, <laughs> I pronounce it differently myself. So how do you pronounce it? <laughs> sometimes I say Wall. Sometimes I say Wall. My dad used to say Wall, so I guess that's right. <laughs> you don't know how to pronounce your last name correctly? <laughs> um, Noah's going off the ledge. No, it is going. No one makes me laugh, man. God, <laughs> I don't know who's more interesting of a person, Noah or Dave. I'm really not sure. They both carry interesting tendencies. I will tell you in uh, interesting is it just another word for weird? <laughs> you must change, not confirm odd. nor deny. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but I will I will tell you how many day how many emails I get a day where people start with hi Curtis all the time. Everybody always calls me Curtis because they think that's my first name. And then the next email when I answer and I said thanks Amber, then they all immediately feel really dumb. Why would they think your name is Curtis? Man, that's weird. I don't, every I have at least seven emails today, and this one guy was like, "I'm so sorry that Curtis I screwed up your name." Exactly like, like a name. name. It's if not I, like your name is David. Well, even if I saw two names, I would assume the last yeah, I've I'm never heard of a person's last name. name is Amber. I never I, like I don't John know what the last name Amber. So many people call me Curtis. My name is so Amber. <laughs> so many people call me Amanda too. Like I don't know why. That's just illiteracy. Yeah. <laughs> I just think, oh hey, <laughs> I know that name. 
Um, anyway, so today we have two incredible releases. We had Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 71. If you guys missed the first part of this interview, we dived in a little bit to the story, but more about the concept of the story, uh, what, how you get an opening going, and uh, there will be more to come on that. But those are your four incredible covers. Uh, Plus, Dave, earlier, you missed it earlier. We told you what our favorite covers were. So you yeah, have to go back to the beginning. To, Rumor has it that go back Casey to the beginning and rewatch the entire episode to see which ones we picked. What? Did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, Dave, what was your favorite cover? Yep. <laughs> David, what was your favorite cover? I. I could safely say that Amber's a C. I mean, uh, Casey's a C. I saw that Casey put C. I did remember that. Um, but wow. Okay. Well, that was our first release. Our second release is a release that we have released through our Kickstarter. If you committed to the Kickstarter, most likely you do have it. I saw Robert Pete say in the comments that he got his. So there is a very good chance that um, if you ordered it, it is either on your its way to you or you already have it. If you haven't ordered it, you should order it because as we were talking about before, Paradise Court is in production to become a movie, which will be incredible. And uh, because of that, um, you'll want to read the, the story first. Um, that is my very fast uh, version of today's NCW. I'm going to let David and Dave go unless there's anything that they would like to talk about before we leave. No. No. Well, uh, thank you. As always, it's been fun with the publishing peeps. I feel like I gotta come up, maybe like D and D, you know, I don't know. Malevolent. <laughs> not that word. <laughs> <laughs> Anything but that word. Um, okay, goodbye, everybody. All right, see ya. Um, so again, you're talking about our two latest releases. Like I said, there's a box set, and then we also have our newest release, um, Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 71. Other stuff that's going on with Zenoscope is next week, we just have, <clears throat> I believe, one release, or I'm probably wrong. Casey always pops it up, and then I'm wrong. Yep, we have two releases, and that's what it is. Next week, come join us at 3 p.m. for two lovely releases. I have it up in my publishing schedule right now which is um oh our god it's may the 4th already <laughs> when did it become may the 4th well our first release is our may the 4th cosplay pinup book um if you haven't seen these in the past they're a lot of fun we do pinups for may the 4th so our cosplay special is coming up next week as well as van helsing finding neverland um so make sure that you read the latest van helsing before that because uh it, there's some connection there, obviously. That's how we set up for this. So those are our two wonderful releases next week. Other stuff that's taking place. I believe Movie Club is happening tomorrow, right? Yep, Movie Club. Happening tomorrow at 6 p.m. The movie Spike Club, but we won't talk about it. And that's all I can say. Can't talk about the movie that's premiering tomorrow. But come join our Movie Club crew. Um, all of our regularies, regular leads are in attendance. I just made up that word. That's fine. Um, I assume then, well, we must be having another retailer live stream and it must be taking place next Tuesday. Am I right about that, Casey? She's giving me the thumbs up. Yep, make sure that you join us next Tuesday at 4 p.m. for our next retailer live stream. If you haven't joined us for a retailer live stream in the past, you'll want to join us because our retailer live stream, 50% of the proceeds go to that comic book shop. So make sure that you support our comic book stores out here. Um, next Monday, Coffee with Casey and Noah, always at 1 p.m. And then our next VCon will be taking place um, further, I'd say mid-May. Casey's trying to lip me the words. She can also just type in the dates and everybody will know from there. Um, you'll also want to stop by David Sweet's booth at Motor City. He will be repping some Zenoscope exclusives and more to come on our future convention schedule of other shows that we will be attending very, very soon. I believe that's it for NCW and for anything on Zenoscope related. Uh, yep. Oh, May the 4th stream. Thank you, Casey. Um, I'm guessing we don't have a graphic, a nice pretty graphic for it. Nope. Okay. Noted. Uh, May the 4th stream. I forgot that you guys do this every single year. What a wonderful, fun time. You know, I'm going to tell you, Star Wars fans are some of the greatest fans in the world. They're very supportive of their brand. I can I can tell you all about that. So uh, make sure that you tune in for the May the 4th stream happening next 
Thursday. And then we probably won't be doing a Revenge of the Six stream, but everybody knows the next Friday, Cinco de Mayo. So go celebrate. You can celebrate after the May the 4th stream with uh, Margarina. Yep. Um, okay, that was it for today's NCW every week at 3 p.m. We're here. Amber, you come for the covers here at Zenoscope, but you save the stories. I will see everybody next Wednesday at 3.